Hi, welcome back guys, or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Vision here with Blind Entertainment, bringing you guys in our video. Today I'm going to be doing my review for The 100, Season 5, Episode 13, Damocles Part 2. So if The 100 is something you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That way I miss some more future The 100 content from me moving forward. Now let's begin. So we pick up this episode with... Our group that was rescued last episode where it was Indra, Gaia, Belmy, Octavia, and Echo, and Maddie who saved them. And they get them back to camp and they begin come up, coming up with a plan to redirect or fight back against the prisoners. Now, I like this because you got here, Octavia finally surrenders and bows before Maddie as the commander. Which is good. I like that they had that. Again, I feel like it would have been stronger if they had Octavia die in the previous episode. And then you got this moment where their fallen leader is returned. They don't have a leader and they all look to Maddie. I think that would have been a stronger moment. But I'm okay with how it played out. But then you got Maddie who goes to the wounded Gaia. And she gives her insight into how to speak to the other commanders. And communicate with them. And how to win the battle. So I really like that. I thought that was a good scene between the two of them. And I just really like Gaia as a character. So that really helped as well. So Maddie comes up with a plan to go back and fight against the prisoners. So they go back and fight against the prisoners. The, my biggest argument with this episode and the previous episode. Is where they battle the the prisoners is the exact same place where where, Ro, where Rowan and the Asgata army showed up in I think it was the tinderbox last season so I just feel like the people who do the behind the scenes who pick out where they film stuff did kind of a poor job of finding a new location it's like they it's I, I it, just, it just takes you out of the moment because you for you should be paying attention to the battle but you're more for me at least I was more focused on the fact that they were fighting in the exact same place as where Arcadia was in the previous seasons and it just didn't make any sense so I gotta take off points there but overall we got a good battle scene with our group they have Bellamy and the and space crew go into the gorge redirect the prisoners and in the ensuring chaos. Murphy is badly shot, but they're able to make an opening and get let, let it be so that our group could get through the gorge and battle the prisoners. So I like that. It was a good moment. They are they fight back and they're able to regain control of the valley. So I really like that. It was a good moment. Then you got the moment where our uh, the prisoners end up surrendering to one crew. Now I really like that. And I really liked one of my favorite moments was the moment where Maddie is about orders the people to kill every prisoner, but Bellamy talks her down, and we get that line about how we were already we've already been here once, and we don't you don't want to make this mistake again. I really like that scene, I and I like how it was Bellamy who gave her that speech, and it was given where he was at the beginning of the series. Plus, I was worried that they're gonna do it where Maddie has to talk to her people down and her. Her be like this prophet kind of thing, which I didn't really want to see happen. So I really like how they had that all play out. It made sense and everything worked out in the end right at that moment. So back with Clark, you got McCree. He's pretty much gone off the deep end. He's torturing Shaw, trying to get him to talk. Now, I, I like these torture scenes. They're very well done, very thought out with the McCree character. The one kind I have with the scene is I don't believe Lindsay her acting when she's crying it feels so fake i'm sorry if you believe it's real it just sounded so fake that i it just bothered me too much and it just was frustrating because it just sounded way too fake and way too much like she was acting but then you eventually got raven who convinces that mccurry that she'll fly and get them out of there which causes Shaw not to be tortured. He was going to get his legs chopped off. He was going to get in like his teeth pulled out. So I really like that. Really cool, awesome torture scenes. But like I said, you got Raven who then decides, okay, you win. I'll fly the ship for you and we'll get you out of here. And we'll get the missiles for you. But then you got Clark who's got another plan going on. She ends up kidnapping Dioza and threatens to kill the baby in the event that Shaw doesn't surrender. Which I really like that move. I really like that move. It's a really cool move. And really good way to have a standoff. But then you got McCreary who hears over the radio. That his people are dying. That his people are losing. 
And at that moment, he pretty much snaps, which I really like. I really like how they had him snap, and you got the, this big standoff where he decides to launch the, hit, I think it's Hifalonium or something like that, that the prisoners were mining for. So he decides to drop that on, on the valley, which is a, which I'm going to go on and say I like, but it also causes me to dislike this episode in a very big way, which I'll get into later. But I like how he's willing to do whatever it takes to not lose. I think that was a great trait to give him as a villain. But I also feel like it causes some issues for myself in the enjoyment of this episode. But then you got him who snaps. And you got everybody who's freaking out. Shaw decides to take take advantage of the situation. And attacks him and his men. Killing them and wounding him. And at that moment Clark just decides enough is enough. And just I guess... Smashes his head in. He she rode he, she rode stomps him or whatever he called it, which I I don't like that. I don't like how it ended for him. I feel like he should have gotten a bolt to the head. Even the way she curb stomped him, it just felt weak and just fake. It didn't feel like actual someone dying. And from there, we got Raven who informs everybody over like I guess a PA system that the end of the world is happening again. Now, I have touchy feelings about how I feel about this because. Part of me liked what they did here, but part of me didn't like it because I feel like they rehashed the season four finale. You had everything pretty much, I'll go into it better but at the end, but you had this time where you, everything, the world was ending and they had a certain amount of time to make it back to a ship. Same thing that happened with Quark and at the end of last season, same thing that happened to Murphy and Monty last season. And I get what they're going for, I can see the parallels there, however... I feel like it was just a rehash, especially with some things moving forward. But you have Bellamy who refuses to go in. You got our group from the camp who are rushing the the wounded there. Like I said earlier, Murphy was wounded, so they're carrying him. They ran out of stretchers. They end up getting there just on time. But I did like this stuff. Yeah, It was a good moment of they need to hurry and rush. I liked it. It was good on their part that I liked how they handled this moment. And I like how they handle the urgency. And then you got the prisoners who show up rushing in. And you got Clark who's saying, no, they're not, they, they're not coming. We're not taking them. But then you got Maddie who says, you know, first we, we save their lives. And then we get to see if they earn them. So, which I kind of like. And I hope we get to see more of the prisoners in season six and learn more about them. And just get introduced to a couple more familiar faces. But then at the same time, you got... Octavia and Abby having a confrontation over leaving Kane behind because after what happened to Vincent, he's pretty much near death at this point. Now, this is stuff that I didn't like because, again, I think that I feel like Octavia needs to take responsibility for what she's doing and stop blaming Abby for the whole cannibalism and everything there and what she's become because it wasn't Abby's fault. I'll always say that. It wasn't Abby's fault. She Octavia chose to kill her own people she didn't. Abby just gave her the idea. Octavia pulled the trigger. It's all that. Uh, that's how I see it. She is. She is a hundred percent responsible. Octavia one hundred percent. So I didn't really like that, and it just kind of frustrated me with, with the Octavia character because it just, I just didn't really like it. But then you got this moment between, uh, between Bellamy and Maddie. Now this is another scene that I didn't really like because you got her telling him about the radio. Now I have no issue with. Bellamy finding out about Clark radioing him every day. However, I feel like they should have done something a little bit more subtle. Where maybe he notices the radio or sees that she had been radioing him. I think that would have worked out a little bit better than like someone directly saying it. I always feel like they should show, don't tell us. And with how they did it, they told us instead of showing it. So I didn't really like that. But everybody shows up in time, just barely getting there on time. And they all get in there and close the hatch and are able to escape on the ship. So I really liked that. Uh, the urgency was good. And just the story there was pretty good. Then we get a few moments between certain characters. We get a moment between Bellamy and Clark. Which I liked. There was a good moment. You learn that Murphy is stable. And will most likely survive. Same with Gaia. She won't lose her leg. Which they were worried about originally. And then you find out that Kane has been put into. Pretty much a medically induced coma. Due to his injuries being so severe. Which is, I feel like it's just their way of kind of writing him off the show for right now since it's going to be on The Passage. I do hope he returns and remains on the show because he's one of my favorite characters. But I did like how they just had those moments to catch up with our group. Then we got a scene between Dioza and Octavia about leadership. I actually really like this one between the two of them. 
where you got the other saying, you know, the, your issue was you liked having the power, which is true. So I really liked that, and it kind of helped Octavia come to, you know, full realization of what happened during those six years. I hope we get more scenes between the two of them, because I really liked the back and forth between Dioza and Octavia. I think it really worked very well between the two of them, and I'm interested to see where they take both of these characters. But then you got our group kind of coming to a meeting, and they decide that Earth isn't coming back for 10 more years due to research they know about the Hippolonium. So they have to go, stay in space, but they don't have enough resources to last as long as they need for the 10 years. So they decide to go in cryo, which is smart. And I really like how they played that out, that cryo actually ended up, the cryo sleep ended up having an important part in the season. So it was a good way to introduce that into the story. So I really liked how they added that there. So then we got scenes between a few of our people are going to bed. You got Maddie and Clark saying goodbye. The dreaming part I felt like it was a little cheesy and forced, but I did like that goodbye between the two of them, even though technically it really wasn't. It just it felt a little bit silly, but it felt all right at the same time. I'm not going to get 100% mad about it. It just, I don't know, it just felt like they needed it. I get it. They probably were going for Maddie's scared. Clark needs to comfort her, but it just felt a little bit forced. Then you got a scene between Octavia and Bellamy about Octavia asking if she's if he still wishes she was dead and he and he says some part of him still wishes she is. I did like that because it, it does show where they both stand and I'm curious to see where they take that relationship in season six. I really hope they don't mend it right away and I really hope they are at odds for a lot of the season. It'd be a good way to change the dynamic between the two siblings and give us a new playground for these two characters to work with. Moving forward in the series. Then we got a time jump and it's revealed that Monty's son has woken up Cork and Bellamy. And we get a big realization that Monty and Harper never went to sleep. And they ended up staying on the ship and monitoring things while everybody else was asleep. Now, I I have mixed feelings about this. Because I Monty was one of my favorite characters along with Harper. And I feel like they were wasted this season. And they didn't have much to do as well as throughout the entire series. So that, to have them go off in this way. I didn't like it. It just frustrated me. I feel like they were main characters. Yet they were sidelined all the time. And pushed it back for characters like Bellamy and Clark and all of them. Which frustrated me. Because at least Monty was a main character. And he should have gotten more time to be in the spotlight. But you get some radio messages between the two of them. Throughout their life. And I really like that. I really, I really did like these messages. They were very emotional. You could see the emotional impact they had on our character, on Bellamy and Clark as they watched them. Very good moments. I will say though, as we got further into the aging process of them, I felt like the CGI was very bad, especially on Monty. It just looked like he was Doc Brown. Just had a very bad accident. It just, I didn't really like the CGI on Monty. It just frustrated me, and looked, in my opinion, extremely, extremely bad. So I got to take off points there, along with it being the whole Monty and Harper dying. It just frustrated me. I didn't really like that they died. Oh, going back to what I said, though, about how I feel like this episode was a replay of season five. Again, you had the, them rush into a spaceship. They were on a short time period. They ended up going into space again. And then something ended up going wrong because... Earth didn't end up coming back, as Monty explains in his messages. Earth didn't come back, so something went wrong. So they had to come back later or go to somewhere else. It, it just felt like a rehash of season five, which I didn't really like. And it kind of frustrated me. But then we end the episode with them looking out at the new planet Monty has found for everybody. And they arrived right there, right, right when they woke up. And so it was okay episode. It wasn't one of my best. It frustrated me a little bit. Overall, though, if I had to give this episode a score, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Nothing higher. I feel like there was good stuff, but some of the things that annoyed me, the episode being a rehash of the last season finale just frustrated me, so I got to take off points there. But overall, I did enjoy the episode, and I'm interested to see where they take it in Season 6. So yeah, guys, that's my review with 100 Season 5, Episode 13, Damocles Part 2. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and share. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon. That way, you miss more of the 100 content from me moving forward. This has been Vision here at Barn Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.